until 1977. I transferred to West Potomac High School when the building was moved in that direction, and I taught there until 1988. Uh, I taught American history primarily. It was a, um, an assignment in which uh, students had to go to the media, uh, establish some kind of a criteria for what a liberal was and what a moderate was, what a conservative was, and then uh, by reading uh, a particular newspaper or magazine or listening to a particular um, commentator uh, or columnist, they would be able to attempt to classify his political philosophy based on um, the standard for what a liberal or a conservative was. And uh, it, apparently uh, it had a lasting effect on many of them. They began to think uh, politically. The, the project was, um, it, it was a heavy burden, not only on them, it was a heavy burden on me because I had to grade all these things, but it, but it, it brought some of them uh, into a, uh, an exercise that involved a lot of writing and research on their part. And uh, some, have, I find out today, that uh, it uh, very much lives with them. Regardless of differing political viewpoints as to the South, without fanfare, but effectively, thanks to true leadership and courage, as exemplified by Groveton's first African-American student, Rayfield Barber, class of 1964. This has been a, a really good weekend uh, for me. I, uh, uh, the chance to come home, uh, the chance to come back to this school, uh, see a lot of people that were uh, very helpful, very instrumental in those first days at Groveton High School. And uh, just good to renew those friendships. As a so, uh, freshman, uh, the uh, courts had uh, acquiesced to our request to uh, come to Groton. And uh, that first year, I was, I guess, 1961, I was here as a uh, freshman and uh, was, I, I thought, uh, received very well uh, by the student body, uh, especially with other things that were going on in the country at that time with uh, school desegregation. Uh, that freshman year, I was elected a class officer. I participated in uh, freshman athletics. Uh, under some duress, because I understand uh, later I was uh, let to be known that uh, the freshman schedule at one point was going to be canceled uh, because of uh, the uh, uh, black athlete uh, plan. Uh, not that I was going to be beaten up on anybody at, at that point in time, but uh, uh, some of it was for safety reasons. Uh, the school and the county, I guess, had received some threats about uh, uh, athletics on the field. And uh, our freshman schedule, I think, was modified to uh, have all of the freshman games that we ended up playing, I think, were played here at Groton. I, part I participated in the student government activities throughout my uh, four years at Groat, and uh, I was a freshman class officer. Uh, in fact, the only male class officer of that freshman class. And uh, again, my sophomore year, I think I was vice president or something of the sophomore class. And then as a senior, I ran for uh, student government vice president and was elected to that office. Uh, and Things at Groton were, were fine. Uh, as a uh, elected official in the student uh, government, uh, later found us, we ran into some difficulty with uh, my participating in the state convention, uh, which was down in Harrisburg, Virginia. I think now what is James Madison University uh, at that time was an all girls school. And uh, when the state organization found out that Groton had a uh, African-American uh, to come down there. Uh, they had requested that the school send someone in my place. And my high school, Groton, and other high schools in the Northern Virginia area uh, banded together and said, you know, no, this is the representative that the student body elected and uh, he'll participate. And with the uh, with that statement from Northern Virginia, some of the Tidewater schools uh, joined in, and uh, they later uh, relented, and uh, I was 
it was okay for me to attend the conference but not stay on the campus uh, because at that time, I, I forget the name of the school, but uh, we did make arrangements through uh, the minister at our church uh, with the minister down in Staunton, Virginia, where I would stay off the campus and attend the activities uh, for the uh, student government representatives. Another uh, problem there was the opening ceremonies uh, being in the state of Virginia. I think the opening song was going to be uh, uh, the song of the Confederacy or something like that. And the uh, representatives from the school uh, thought that maybe we should sing another song for that opening ceremony. History teacher Jack Hiller recalls that there were other changes later in the 60s. Um, when I started teaching here in uh, 1959, this was a uh, very conservative uh, place. Uh, students uh, were to wear belts in their pants, and uh, girls weren't even allowed to wear culottes. Uh, boys' haircuts had to be, you know, two fingers above their eyes, and uh, shirts always had to be tucked in, and it was kind of an uptight little place. And as we went through the 60s, everything began to kind of disintegrate, as it did in the rest of the country. I uh, went on sabbatical in 1968 and, uh, to Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. When I came back, I was shocked by how the school had changed. Uh, students were protesting. Uh, they were wearing uh, clothes that were mark mock military with peace symbols all over them. They were extremely um, uh, anti-authoritarian. A teacher uh, was uh, someone who you uh, told uh, to uh, go to hell if you felt like doing that. I was really quite shocked. Their language was absolutely awful. When I, cl when I, when I closed my eyes, I thought I was back in a military barracks. And when I opened my eyes and saw their clothing, I thought I was in a mental institution. Uh, the, uh, the, the atmosphere around here was very up tight, and um, uh, I, I find myself embroiled in that. Lots of student demonstrations. Um, a lot of kids didn't take baths. Uh, they smelled awful. It was a, a grew their hair long, uh, grew beards, ugly was in. Um, it was just a different world than what I had left. Uh, but slowly, that, that began, began to change in, in the 70s. Uh, uh, and uh, there was, I guess, a swing back uh, to a more moderate, middle kind of uh, position. Uh, uh, clothing, uh, well, we, we weren't as hung up on, on the type of clothes people wore or how they wore their hair or where they had facial hair, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, died out uh, over the time, and uh, we, we learned to uh, live with each other. It was all part of the Vietnam era, part of the protest era, and the kids here were simply reflecting what was going on around the country, uh, and uh, it, it was an era of, of, of great change, great tension, great pressure, great protest, um, and uh, we, we managed to get through it uh, somehow. Or recalls that there were other changes later in the 60s. I always thought they'd end up being bankers and lawyers, and indeed that's what they have turned out to be. Uh, they've melded quite well into the system and uh, uh, aren't a threat to anybody anymore, <laughs> along with uh, growing a little heavier. But uh, they turned out fine. They turned out fine.